Lieutenant. Sir, the new upgrades to my fighter necessitated a more thorough pre-flight inspection than usual. Relax, Lieutenant. Follow me. I want to show you something. There she is. I've got a good feeling about this one. Commander David. Today I'm reviewing Soul Exodus, a space combat simulator that is touted by its developers as a return to the good old days of the genre, when we had games like TIE Fighter, Wing Commander, and Free Space. I listen, Cassie, I really do. Permission to recount contradictory anecdote? Denied. Let's get to that first waypoint. First off, I'll begin with my usual analysis of widescreen and multi-monitor capabilities. The game uses the Unreal 3 engine, which is notorious for having bad default multi-monitor support. On the day of the game's release, this was pretty much the case as all in-game rendering was vertical minus, and getting a multi-monitor resolution working required a hex hack of the user's profile file, and that only worked half the time. Well, that sounds not good. Now to the developer's credit, we brought these issues up with them, and the day after the game's release, they patched the game to allow custom resolutions to be entered by way of editing an INI file. While not a perfect solution, it is still a workable one. Furthermore, the same configuration file has a line in it that, when edited, will swap the rendering behaviour from vertical minus to horizontal plus. Again, we brought this up with the developers and they said that they will change the default value in a future patch. When they do this, the game will natively be horizontal plus. She was well aware of the urgency of your situation, as was I. You did good, Cassie. Unfortunately, the user interface hasn't fared much better. Both the UI and the heads-up display are stretched. While this looks fine on a widescreen monitor, on a multi-monitor system it damages the visuals of the game. That said, despite the fact the UI is stretched, it still functions correctly, so it doesn't prevent you from playing the game. Lastly, the two animated cutscenes are also stretched on all aspect ratios. However, in-game cutscenes render to a 16x9 aspect ratio and look the same regardless of resolution. If Soul Exodus had been left as it was on release, then this game would get a C grade from the widescreen gaming forum for its widescreen and multi-monitor compliance. However, thanks to the developers' commitment to the community, when they release the patch that changes the default rendering behaviour to horizontal plus, then this game will receive a B grade. Well done, everyone! The graphics themselves are not the best I've seen in a space game, although they're not bad from a developer with a team of six. That said, some of the textures in the enemy ships do look bland if you compare them to the textures of the static objects. The sound effects are reasonably well done and fit the theme of a space game. The music, however, is a little dull and repetitive, but you can always turn it off and leave your media player on in the background. The game's story, while interesting, isn't very deep, and largely serves to join together the eight missions in the game. The general synopsis is that the Sun is dying, and a religious extremist group calling themselves the Children of Dawn have taken over the Soul System. The COD believe that the destruction of the Sun will bring judgement to the human race, so it becomes your job to liberate humanity and lead them to safety. The story is told almost exclusively through voiced radio chatter, which for the most part holds up to scrutiny. I assumed you were joking. You ever known me to be all that funny? Oh, you two are adorable. As for the gameplay itself, it's largely what you would expect from a space combat simulator. The devs said they was aiming for a control style like that found in Free Space and Wing Commander, and while it's not perfect, it does feel better than some of the more recent attempts at the games in this genre. The game works fairly well with the default mouse and keyboard setup, although you might want to tweak the keyboard layout to suit your personal preference. The game also supports joypads and joysticks, however at time of writing support is hit and miss, but this is something else the devs are actively working on. The control system itself is fairly standard, and like the games it's based on, it doesn't have any strafe controls. It does, however, have a slide system, which basically allows you to turn around without changing the direction your ship is travelling in. The controls work well for the most part, however I do have a couple of issues with the current control system. Firstly, missiles are fired by holding down the fire key, waiting for a lock, and then releasing. Releasing before the missiles lock, fire the missiles anyway. I would much rather that the game auto-locked onto the current target and then fired on key press. My other issue is that the lead indicator is next to useless. This is only made worse by how far apart your two main guns are. Hey, the good general just ran his mouth one too many times. He's given me an idea. The game also allows you to hack into the computer systems of capital ships. This allows you to take control of their turrets or expose the ship's weak spots. This is done by way of targeting a transmissions node on the ship, memorising the code that appears in the bottom left of your screen, selecting that code from a list, and then selecting the command you want to override. It's a nice idea, but it could be better executed. The system is also hard to use on a multi-monitor computer due to how far out the way the code is you need to memorise. 
Unfortunately there isn't much in the way of variety. You're basically fixed to using one ship and that has a fixed set of armaments. The only customization is to allow you to slightly increase the stats in one of three areas, guns, hull plating and afterburners. There is also only one difficulty level, and no extras beyond the campaign missions. The devs are open to suggestions for ways to improve the game, and as they would like to expand it further. Currently, the full campaign will take you around about three to four hours to complete. Looks good. How's the test pilot? Ready for my own command, sir. Jesse, please make a note that the lieutenant commander is exhibiting delusional behavior. Denied. Sarcasm detected. I think that about covers it. If I could recommend this game based on how helpful the devs have been at supporting the community I would, but since I can't I shall say this. If you enjoy space combat simulators then this game is definitely worth checking out for its £7 or $10 price tag. For anyone else the developers are working on a demo so I advise you to check that out when it's released. If you think it's the type of game you would enjoy then give the developers your support. Reactor down.